Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at So Back by Pandasaurus Games. Sobek is a game for exactly two <laughs> players in which both players are going to be competing for different uh, resources, um, some wheat, some cattle, some fish, some random things it seems like. But this game does have an Egyptian theme and uh, you're going to be multiplying your sets by however many scarabs are on those tiles as well. You've got a little bit of like King Domino type scoring if you're familiar with that game. And even if you're not, I'm gonna explain how this game works down below and it'll make much more sense to you. And then we're gonna come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here is Sobek, two players from Pandasaurus Games and Bruno Cathala. Let me show you guys how this two-player drafting game works, in which you are going to be trying to complete sets of these different tiles that you see out here on the board, selling them for points, and uh, the, most, the player who has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. How this game works, you are going to set this game up a little bit differently than most games. You're going to have your starting tiles, which will have the gray backing on them, and uh, you can distinguish the regular tiles that will have this backing on them. Uh, and so you will make sure to have your starting tiles in uh, shuffled up and then placed on the center four spaces out here. You'll give two to each player and then you will set aside two tiles so you won't know exactly what tiles the other player has. And uh, looking at your tiles, you are going to be trying to put together sets. So seeing what I have here with the fish and the cattle, um, I would choose one of the first, uh, I would go first choosing one of the four tiles here in the middle. And uh, since I have fish and cattle, I would probably want to take one of them. And how this works on your turn, you are going to have action selection. Drafting is one of your options. And so if I draft this fish tile right here, I would take it and I would note where the colored shaded region is on the outside ed edge of this tile. And, and so it's north and south. And that is important because that is the direction that I play the Ankh Pawn facing north and south. And what that is going to do is that's going to tell my opponent which tiles they have to choose from when it is their turn to draft. And so my opponent would then get to take their turn. And if they decided to draft, they would have to choose one of the tiles that is uh, being pointed to by the Ankh Pawn. And you can see how the drafting or the shaded regions looks. It could be pointed diagonally such as that, in which case you would select either this one, that one, or that one, or obviously it could be uh, going sideways, such as this tile right here, uh, facing left and right, and that would be your options. Now, not only is it important to note that the player can choose any tile in this column, since this is where the Ankh Pawn is pointing, but if they were to select any tiles that were not directly adjacent to the pawn. So for instance, these two tiles, uh, if they instead drafted this tile right here, passing over this tile, you would have to take that tile and place it in your corruption, which is on one of these boards. We'll come back to why that is uh, something you want to try to avoid. Now, so uh, the next player may choose to draft this tile here, and since it is pointing diagonally, then that would be how you would replace or how you would place the pawn. And uh, the spaces do not refill. They only refill whenever you are wanting to draft a tile, but there are no options available to you. So what else could you do on your turn? Well, the second thing that you might do on your turn is to sell a set. Now, in order to sell a set, you need to have at least three of, the, of, of a matching kind. And since I only have two fish and one cattle, I cannot sell a set. But if I were to happen to have this particular one, I could sell it. Now, I would not choose to sell this set because I have no scarabs. Uh, you see that there are no scarabs on the bottom of these tiles. If I were to have this tile with it, I would have one scarab. And the way selling a set scores, it's the number of tiles multiplied by the number of scarabs on those tiles. So I have four tiles here that are all fish times one scarab, that's worth four points. Now, I, I have to have at least three, and I could only choose to sell three, holding back this particular tile. And the reason why I might do that is, say I sell these three, and I would place them uh, 
face up in front of me. I know that's not really on frame there, but I would have my fish there in front of me. And if I were to gain another fish, I uh, would only have two tiles. And so I would need to get a third tile to sell a set because again, you have to have a minimum of three. And uh, even though I already have a set of fish over here, I still have to have three more if I want to add them to the set. I could not just sell these two. So there is some strategy involved into not selling a complete set if you were to have leftovers. The third thing that you might do on your turn is use a character. You can see that there are some tiles that are red with a character on them, and these are face down. This is the back of the tile. You don't know what's on the other side, whereas all the other tiles are placed face up. These characters give you special abilities, and you can see on this handout here what those special abilities let you do. And uh, you could play these at any time using the special ability as your action. That's how the game is going to work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if there ever comes a time when you want to draft, but you are unable to do so. So for instance, let's say that all the tiles in this column have been drafted and the Ankh Pawn were facing the way that it is facing, you would uh, not be able to draft, obviously. And so if you wanted to draft, you would have to refill the board. Now, the way refilling goes, you use the stack of tiles over here and you refill with this center square first going in a clockwise direction. And then this uh, middle border going again in a clockwise direction and then the outer frame in a clockwise direction. So it would work something like this. And uh, we keep these red character tiles face down and then we would go in the outer or the, the middle border and then we would go in the outer border. And now that the board is completely refilled, the next player or whoever was wanting to draft a tile, they would have to choose one of the center four. And when you choose one, such as this statue right here, again, you place the Ankh Pawn in the direction that it tells you on the tile you're drafting. Now, these statue tiles are special. They can be wild and added to a set. And so if I did not have three to make up a complete set, if I only had two, I could add this statue tile to make it a complete set. Now, it's not going to give me any scarabs, but it is going to at least let me sell something. And I cannot have a set of statues. I have to have at least one other thing to add those statues to, such in this case, I would be able to sell the marble here. And I would have two scarabs and I could use the statues as marble. So it'd be two times four tiles. That's good for eight points at the end of the game. Now, there are a couple of other things to note about in this game. When you do sell a set, you are able to look at these Perogu tokens that are over here on the right or left side of the board. There are five of them that are going to be placed face down. You don't know what they are as there are extras that are going to be kept in a stack off to the side. And when you sell a set, you get to look at each of these tiles and select the one that works best for you, choosing one and putting the other four back down. And uh, th these are first come first serve. So whenever you, somebody sells a set again, even if it is the player who sold the first set, they get to take another tile. And once they're all gone, they're gone. The reason why you keep the extras over here in a reserve is not to refill this because this never refills, but because there is a particular character that lets you draw from the re reserved stack over there. The last thing about this game, on some of the tiles, there is the Dabin token up here in the top right. And what that denotes is, is that if you were to draft a tile with this icon on it, you could immediately discard this tile to be able to draw from this bag one of the Dabin tokens. And the Dabin tokens are just going to be straight victory points at the end of the game. You can see the breakdown of the tokens there. Nine points. That is a lot of points in this game. And uh, there is one tile with that Dabin icon on it for each of the six sets in the game. Also, real quick, whoever has more corruption on their corruption pads, I mentioned this earlier in the rules portion of the video, they are going to uh, not get to draw from the back. Whoever had fewer corruption, they will get to draw 
From this bag, a number of Daven tokens. You'll at least get to draw one, and you may get to draw more if you have three or fewer than the person who had more corruption. And so that is going to be a huge bonus to the person who has less corruption. And that's pretty much the gist of the game. The game will continue until the stack of tiles completely runs out, and somebody were to want to draft a tile but unable to do so, and you can't refill the board, and nobody had, or you couldn't sell any sets because you had nothing in your hand that makes a set and you have no characters to be able to do so essentially you have no action available to you on your turn that will end the game you'll count up your final score using the scoreboard here on the back of one of the player aids and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner and that is how you play Sobek two players let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one and we're back and now we're going to share our thoughts on Sobek from a gamer and non-gamers perspective so Sam, first impressions, seeing this out on the table, what'd you think? Um, it looked interesting. You can definitely tell it's a Pandasaurus game. Like it just... <laughs> it has that, that yes. vibe to it. And, that we, and we like a lot of Pandasaurus games. Okay. So I, I, it was a game that I was definitely interested in learning. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely has the Egyptian theme on it. Everything about this game is, is very themey. Uh, I really love the chunky wooden... Uh, Whatever that piece is called, I can't remember the Ankh Pawn. Um, really enjoy that. The the artwork on the tiles is great. Very colorful, yeah. nice look to this game. It's well polished, well graphic designed. Um, graphically designed, I think would be the more grammatically correct way. Um, let's talk about the gameplay with this game. Now, I feel like there have been some really cool spatial elements to gaming that have come out in the last few years that really grabbed my attention. And this game has that, the spatial element of placing this onk upon where you draft from, and then that is used to block off the rest of the border, or you're confined to only being able to select these, these different tiles. Yeah. I really enjoy that aspect, that mechanic. What did you think about it? Yeah, I like that too. It, it added something a little unique to the game. Yeah, it makes it so that it's not just a straightforward yeah. drafting game. There's a there's another layer of strategy yeah. into this game. Now, you as a non-gamer, what do you feel like as far as when you start adding in layer upon layers of strategy? This, it did make it more difficult. And I did think about that as we were playing. I'm not I was not as great, especially the first time in strategizing the movement of that pawn. Um, I knew what my goals were but it, it moving the pawn limits you mm -hmm. and so you have to kind of think I, i'm better at games where i can just think about what i need to do and so that adds a different level but it wasn't so hard that i you know couldn't play it or couldn't do it yeah now i will say um and and i try not to do this in review videos of of bringing in other games i really want to focus on this particular game but as i was playing it i couldn't help but think that there's a lot of similarities to another game that came out earlier this year and that's dog lover by aeg and it also uses the same concept of drafting cards from a central market but you're constricted to only being able to draft a certain few with that watchdog that is placed by the other players. Yeah. And that blocks off cards that you're not able to select. And this is very similar to that in that same idea. Now I feel like you don't have as many choices in this game as you do in, in Dog Lover. Um, as you really, you can only pick on the from the row, column, or diagonal that the yeah. pawn is pointing to. So you don't have as many choices, which yeah. is a bit of a dampener for me on this experience. But I really do like the set collection. I do like the King Domino type scoring. Yeah. Um, and, and I like drawing from the bag and seeing what kind of tokens I get. Yeah. That's always that's always a fun aspect to it. So for you, was it, uh, was it easy to kind of try to figure out a way to excel in this game and do well? Eh. At near the end, it was, I think at the beginning, you're just kind of, I felt like I was grasping at straws just a little bit, trying to figure out what my goals were. What uh, sets you could get. Yeah, yeah. you know, you're, you are limited to what the pawn's pointing to. So what direction do I want to go with that? Um, so I don't feel like it was my best scoring game, but I think as you play more, it's going to be okay. a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, and for that's sure. Just, some games are just like that. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, so let's talk pros and cons on this particular game. What stands out to you in a good way? Um, it's a nice size. It's a good, small Absolutely, yeah. game. I like that. I feel like we've had a lot lately that take up a lot of floor space, which is fine, but we travel a lot, and so we like to bring games with us, and I think this is a good one to bring. Yeah, it, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, but it, I'm going to bring back Dog Lover again. If there was something I didn't like about it's that game, space it to took up a ton of space. Yeah. Whereas this one, yeah, you're exactly right. It doesn't take yeah. up a whole lot of space. And it, it's on, everything's on the board yeah. for the most part. Yeah, you're so right. I like that, yeah. Any other pros? Um, I mean, it was, I really like that, and I know we keep saying this, but the King Domino scoring. Uh -huh. I like that. You, if you play King Domino, you, you recognize how that works, and... Um, it just adds a little bit because that's you can't always see how many scarabs are on them. So that kind of changes at the end. You, you, they may look like they have more tiles, but you have more scarabs. And so, you know, it's not as obvious who wins. Right. Yeah. You won't know until the final shakeout. Yeah. But you end. also have to pay attention. I feel like that was probably a mistake that I made at the beginning as well. Just trying to get tiles and then realizing later oh, on. Oh, I have one scarab. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> or right. I have none. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was definitely a mistake I made. Yeah. Um, I don't know the name of these tiles. The Pierogi to uh, tokens, um, but a lot of those tokens are really interesting, and especially the one that has the two scarabs on it, because you can add that to a yes. stack of, of of your of your tiles, a set, and man, you can really get a lot of points yeah. by doing that. So, I enjoy those tokens in it. Um, what doesn't work for you with this game? Um, I don't know if anything doesn't work for me, but it definitely is more thinky. Okay. Just because of the pawn aspect of it. And um, like I said earlier, just trying to figure out how do I move this to, you know, get them um, to not get what they want. It requires more concentration and paying attention of what they're doing, which I don't like to pay attention to what Lance is doing when <laughs> we play games. Yeah, I think that is absolutely true with this game. You do, since it, especially since it's a two-player only game, you're really kind of going head to head and you really want to be observant. Okay, she's drafted three fish in a row. So I really don't want to leave a fish, especially if it has a scarab on it. Yeah. I don't want to leave that available to her. So I'm deliberately going to take this tile so that we're not leaving the onk pointing to the yeah. fish. You do really have to focus on that aspect of this game. And that's not always something you know that uh, uh, can be easily picked up on unless you're an experienced gamer. Yeah. Um, and even if you are an experienced gamer, that may not be something you always want to do. That's yeah. a little bit like hate drafting, I suppose, and that can yeah. rob a little bit of the, well, I really don't want to do that. I'm just doing it because I know it's, it's blocking you. I want to do what I want to do kind of thing. Um, so you do have that with this game. Yeah. Um, I will, I will say again, I think a little bit of a con for me was the decision space on drafting is much smaller than other games. Yeah. Uh, at times, you, you may only have a decision between one or two things. Um, and even if you do have a little bit more of a decision, sometimes you have to take corruption in order to take the thing you really want. And I think, I don't know this to be certain, but in the games that I've played with this, <clears throat> whoever loses the corruption battle at the end of the game has always lost the game. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that that's 100% of the time, but in the games I've played, it's 100% of the time. Yeah. Whoever's lost the corruption battle ultimately ends up losing the game. Those tokens you can draw from the bag are pretty stinking powerful. I mean, some of them are nine points. I think nine points is the highest, and I, the games are usually yeah. won by, um, you know, minuscule points. It's not a huge points difference between the two. So nine points will definitely decide the game in most games you, you play. So <clears throat> um, not a huge fan of that aspect, but that's a minor thing. All right, scale of one to 10, love to hate. Where does Sobek come in for you? I thought it was a good game and it's one I wouldn't mind playing again. Um, I'd probably give it a 7.2. Okay, solid score for it, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm probably right in the same ballpark as you. I was thinking 7.3 on this particular game. Um, I, again, I really enjoy these spatial kind of drafting elements yeah. that really spice up a solid tried and true mechanic like drafting. It just gives it a new feel, a new, a new flavor to it. And I enjoy that. I really having to think, okay, if I take this one, then these are the ones she's going to be able to take. So I really got to think about that. And so... I enjoy that. It just, you know, it has some a few quirks to it that I'm not yeah. so thrilled with. So, 
7.2, 7.3, very solid scores, and that is Sobek. It is from Pandasaurus Games. Leaves us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this game. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.